You are now listening to Mike's Opinion. Logic Unleashed. That's right. You are now listening to and watching the Mike's Opinion podcast. How are you doing? You know, I always want to know right off the rip, right off the top. How are you doing? I hope you are doing okay. I hope you're doing fine out there. I hope you're doing better than fine. I hope you're doing great, spectacular. I hope spring is springing for you. I hope you, you know the weather is good where you at. I know it's really nice here. You know, I'm from New York City, but I'm, I live in, 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 in Texas, in the Dallas area. It's the 70s, you know, 50s, 60s at night. Ah, it's lovely. The birds are chirping. The insects are flying. Spring is springing. And I hope it is where you at. I hope you're doing all right. As always, this is the world famous update episode. Excuse <clears throat> me. And I haven't done an update episode. I missed a month. And speaking of that, I'm a day late and a dollar short. As a matter of fact, I'm two days late. I usually drop on every Wednesday, but life be life in. Life be life in. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes, yo, certain things take precedence. But I miss you. You know I had to do this. I'm dropping on Friday. So um hopefully something for you to chew on for the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Little tidbit of your day. Little tidbit. Like, share, comment, follow, subscribe, do all that stuff. Especially on YouTube. Tell all your friends. Um, donate a few dollars if you can. All of this is in the show notes. Wherever you listening or wherever you watching, your support is greatly appreciated. So yo. We got we got boat crashes. We got Diddy. Oh, oh yeah. We got the the solar eclipse coming. Yo, I got a lot of stuff to cover in this update. So let's just dive right in. We're gonna start with something light. I think it's about a week. I think it's like April the eighth, and I should have been a little bit more prepared. I gotta shave, yo. Face is itchy. Um, solar eclipse. So a full eclipse, solar eclipse is coming. It's going to turn day and the night. Now, most of it you're only going to see in a, in a swath of the United States. Guess who's in that swath? Me. We right in where it's going to be the darkest. I haven't copped those glasses yet. So um, I got to cop those soon because we don't want no mishaps. We don't want to end up like Ray Charles. And I'm not making fun of the blind. Hold on. First of all, just y'all know. You can't, you can't make fun of that. You can't have fun no more. You can't crack jokes because it's jokes are now insensitive. You're being insensitive if you say a joke about anybody. But I guarantee you, Ray Charles probably would have laughed at that. If you know anything about Ray um, Charles, I don't know him. I saw him portrayed greatly by um, Jamie Foxx, shout out to Jamie Foxx, shout out to Ray Charles. But uh, my understanding is Ray Charles lost his sight by looking at the sun. Is the whole point of that. So um, don't do that. Do not do that. Okay. And as a matter of fact, you know what? I am prepared. I got some notes. Hold on. I got some notes. I have some notes here about the um, about the eclipse. I, mean, I know I'll be coming prepared. Come and prepare, Joe. So just hold on. Let me get to that. Yeah, April 8th. April 8th, 2024 this year. A total solar eclipse. And it's going to make it eerie and magical just brief. And um, shout out to Dr. Stephen Greer, who has the CE5. And y'all know I'm not. Anything I mention here, I'm not sponsored. I'm not getting no kickbacks. I'm not getting any what they call payola. I'm not getting nothing. So support the show, please. But, you know, he's like, has this thing where people focus and he, he, he says we can, we can summon UFOs. So who knows what could happen? I saw a story of this 105 year old man. This is his 10th solar eclipse. And my man at 105 walking around his garage talking to the news, building telescopes at 105. Big ups to that, man. I don't know who he was. Um, I didn't dig into it, but I just remembered that. I didn't dig into his story. But um, I hope 
to still have my mental faculties at 105 and to be able to build stuff and do a, a news interview. And I think that's great. But it's going to be across the United States, Canada, Mexico. Um, Nana, uh, Nana, Nana, rest in peace, Nana. NASA said the best places to watch include Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and Texas, which is where I currently reside. Um, the times are going to vary widely, but just it's a good time to be outside. Hopefully, the clouds will not obstruct our view. And uh, the weather will cooperate, and we will be able to see this 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 magic, right? That doesn't happen very often, where the sun is out and the moon completely comes and covers it, and you see this corona. Yeah, uh, y'all that follow me that have listened to you know many of the episodes. This is episode one hundred eighty-eight, I believe. But um, so dig in. But y'all know I'm a lover of Earth. I'm fascinated by nature. Uh, one day I hope to travel more around the Earth than I already have, and um, you know, take my kids and grandkids and and just travel around and see all the stuff because this Earth we live on is, I mean, it's miraculous. It's awesome. And we just take this stuff for granted. Excuse me. You know, so much of us are so immersed, you know, on our devices and whatever interests us, whatever captures our attention. I think we literally forget to stop and smell the flowers, stop and smell the roses. You know, just let a butterfly land on your nose. You know what I'm saying? Or just... Do some grounding, like put your feet in the grass, put your feet in the sand, put your feet in the dirt, you know, and appreciate nature. So this eclipse thing for me is a another connector to remind me, and I really don't mean, need much reminding because I, I, you know, I love nature and I try to, and it, um, to, uh, uh, I keep wanting to say integrate, to involve myself with it, connect myself to it, and stay connected to it. You know, it's really therapeutic and being appreciative of this earth, I think, is something um, that we all should do and, and should be. Um, so let me go back to my notes here about the eclipse. I think that's all I have really on the eclipse, but uh, cop your glasses. Do not look directly at the sun. Ever. Ever. Really? But um, you don't want to lose your eyesight. If you got little ones, make sure they don't do it either, you know, because kids going to kid. Um, I can't recommend where to get your glasses from, but you should be able to uh, get some, uh, but I understand you want eclipse glasses that complies with the ISO 12312-2 international standard. And I'll repeat that. You want eclipse glasses that comply with the ISO 12312-2 international standard when viewing any solar eclipse. An eclipse, sunglasses that meet those standards are a thousand times darker than standard sunglasses. Um, make sure you don't look at it through a camera. Even, you know, you might have a camera set up. You might take a quick look. Don't do that. Binoculars, telescopes, don't do that. Protect your eyes. Enjoy yourself. But at the same time, you know, do what you need to do um, to protect yourself. Um, so starting off with some light. <clears throat> um and this update episode is, uh, I'm trying to keep it short, but it's going to be, you know, descending. I would like to say it's going to ascend. Maybe I should have saved that story to the end. But, um, you know, it's it's just not the best news. But these are things that capture my attention. These are things that are happening, that, are, that have happened or are happening. Um, we can't stick out head in the sand and ignore it, right, just because it's bad. 
the um, Key Bridge in Baltimore, um, I believe it is uh, officially called the Scott Key Bridge. I think people up there in the region, they call it Key Bridge. Uh, if you hadn't heard uh, a couple days ago, a barge, giant, huge barge that was getting ready to leave the United States, heading out to the international waters, hit one of the supports and the whole bridge collapsed. Six people died. They still searching for some of the bodies. My understanding is the six people died were all workers on the bridge. Ironically, all immigrants. Um, this ship flew under a Singapore uh, Singapore flag. It was called the Dolly, and I don't know, right? Because I'm not monitoring immigrants that come into the United States. But if the media is to be believed, mainstream media, particularly one side of the media, is all terrorists and gang members, and sex traffickers and drug traffickers, and that's it. When, in fact, it would appear that the majority of immigrants that are trying to cross the border into the United States are trying to come here for a better life. Whatever that means, a better life. Most of them are hard workers. Most of them do things that a lot of us Americans opt not to do. I challenge you to go into the kitchen of any restaurant, from fast food to casual to upscale five-star fine dining, and not find an immigrant in the kitchen cooking it up, hooking it up. I challenge you, just ask or say, may I see your kitchen? Just go take a look. Or wander in there accidentally like you're looking for the bathroom. Big ups to all the immigrants out here. Now, of course, I do not mean the ones that mean bad. You know, say what you want about the drugs. Okay, that's, I'm not even sweating them because if there was no demand, there would not be a supply. Governments have been drug runners themselves. So I'm really not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones that are coming here on that violent rah-rah craziness. You know what I'm saying? Um, killing and raping and, and stuff like that. And, you know, sex trafficking, forcing people into the sex trade. Stuff like that. We could just, you know, miss them. But um, I wish they weren't coming is what I'm saying. So, um, yo, I was up and awake when this news broke because I'm often up late. And, yo, this port in Baltimore is the ninth biggest United States port for international cargo. So we talking all kind of stuff from like, I mean, cars to, to I mean, all, all kind of stuff comes in and out of this port. Um, it handled, this Baltimore port in 2023 handled $80 billion worth of goods and 53, excuse me, almost 52 and a half million tons of cargo. That's a lot. That's a lot. But y'all check this out though. Um, this ain't the only recent Bridge accident, particularly fatal bridge accident. And some people are starting to wonder, yo, what's up? A bridge in southern China? Um, sliced in half. Parts of a bridge cut through the hell of, hull of a massive ship in Argentina. The one in China um, 
people died. So I think five people died in the one in China. Um, yo, <clears throat> you ever been driving on a long bridge and been like, yo, and just felt a little uneasy? I do. I have. Because I am not the best at treading water. So, in the future, if you happen to see Mike of the Mike's Opinion podcast going across a lot, like a bridge, a long bridge, and you see me rocking a life breast, vest, life breast, life vest, then that's why. Because I'm just trying to be prepared. I was never a Boy Scout, but I love their motto be prepared. Like, with the solar eclipse I just talked about, if the UFOs come or the sun just stop, I mean the moon just stop and don't never move and something or something crazy happens, right? So the we know the moon affects the tide, we know how the sun affects the earth. What happens when they line up like that? Something it's got to affect some stuff, right? Because the sun is always tripping, it's mass coronas and spitting out stuff and disrupting satellites and aurora borealises and all of that. So it's hard to say, yo, what could happen? But be prepared. Have your bug out bag on deck. Have extra water. You know, you might want to tuck that thing in your pocket. You know, I mean, you just never know. Just be prepared just in case. Because, you know, besides nature, humans going to human. And ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that happened. Um, and you know, rest in peace to those souls. One of the wives of the, the, the immigrant workers that were working on the bridge that subsequently died. Um, I guess he was on, on the phone with his wife when it happened. She said it was on break. Can you imagine you on break at your job and the floor just fall out? Like you hear this bang, this big giant barge. And the next thing you know, the whole bridge is collapsing. You don't have time to get out your car. And, and it's a wrap. It's your time to go. And I, I dare say the majority of us never knows when that is. So appreciate every moment. Appreciate your life. You know? Because you just don't never know. Live for today. But plan for tomorrow. Because you never know what's going to happen. So. um, Yo, this next joint is from my sports people. Huh. It's always something. With something. Right? Um, Shoei Otani. And for those that don't know who he is, Shoei Otani is arguably the best baseball player out right now. Um, and I believe, I don't know if he's Chinese or Japanese. My wife says I shouldn't say Oriental. My wife is half Asian, so I should say Asian person. Um, but I'm scrolling through my notes here trying to find, so I don't know, but, um, he's a sensation so much so that he signed a $700 million contract over 10 years. I believe it is. Let me, let me just repeat that. $700 million. He plays both ways. Meaning he, he plays, you know. He he hits, he 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 does all the stuff, right? Um and money, money, sometimes I wish there was no money. I wish we just all bartered, we all traded, you know, we all did something like I grow corn, I can trade my corn for clothes. I can trade my, trade my corn for sugar. I can trade my corn for bread. I can trade my corn for whatever. And, you know, electricity was all off the grid. 
and we all had solar panels or windmills or I I, mm, I just wish things were, were different. <sighs> A dude named Matthew Boyer, who was supposedly an illegal bookie, he met the interpreter for Shoei Otani. Shoei Otani don't speak no English or much English. His interpreter, whose name was Epe Mizahara, and I'm pretty sure maybe I'm, I'm, that's not the perfect pronunciation, Epe Mizahara, they were doing some business. Shoei Hani's interpreter, Incurred a huge gambling debt. Millions of dollars gambling debt. Now there's lots of wild speculation. Was Shoei Otani actually betting? Because the interpreter has been having some conflicting stories. First he said Otani knew, didn't know nothing about it. Then he said, oh, honey, you know, Otani, you know, paid his gambling debts off. Which is it? It, it, it? it brings back memories of Pete Rose. And, you know, Pete Rose basically still pissed off about the whole thing, you know, and said he was never betting. And I think he's come around since then. But um, all-time hit leader. And I, I'm pretty sure possibly... You know, Otani's going to surpass that at some point, maybe, because uh, the boy can ball. The boy can ball. But um, four and a half million dollars um, is what's at question. And I've seen this story kind of die in the media. When you get to this level of money, there's lots of people involved, right? You got representatives, you got attorneys, you got agents, you got people that's eating off of you. When you generate $700 million, a lot of people around you eat it. His interpreter, everybody's eating because of your talent. So um, did they try to game the system and try to make big bets and lost? I don't know. What I do know is when I read this story, it reminded me that I wish that there was no money. I wish that money didn't make, I've seen money do people, make people do the craziest, I mean, outlandish, unbelievable stuff. And there's a misconception with the saying that money is the root of all evil. That's, that's not the saying. The love of money is the root of all evil. And we're all focused on the money. I, I want your support. I'd like you to give me some of your money so I can help grow this show. Ultimately, I'd like to grow this show big enough, maybe grow some, uh, uh, you know, attract some sponsorship and turn this into a real living, you know, and hire staff and, and all the stuff. I've got great ideas for great production right now. It's just me. I'm a one-man band. I hope to grow this. I'm not going to get no loans to do this. When I do it, I want to be in the green, or excuse me, in the black, as they say, the one, the one positive terminology of black, right? And I don't want to owe anybody anything. I want to own this. So I own it. It's just not making no money, but that's fine. Um, no, it's not really fine. I wish it was better. But... um. I'm thinking to myself, because just tell me a little, let me tell you a little bit about this showy contract has $700 million. He didn't just get all like he signed and is going to get most of the money on the end of that 10 years. So maybe he wanted or needed to bet. Maybe he was betting big. Maybe they just making bad bets. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know. But this was yet another reminder, like, I don't know, the presumptive nominee Trump selling Bibles and selling sneakers 
because, you know, he's got to come up with a lot of money for Bond. I think $175 million has been reduced to. Um, I just wish we weren't so materialistic and money-centric. If I didn't have family that I love and that love me, you might find me butt naked or with a loincloth, with a cave, with a small fire and a spear somewhere on this planet so far off the grid you would never find me. And I would just hunt and kill my food and enjoy the planet. And you say, oh, Mike, you bugging, son. I'm telling you I'm not. Now, the trick to that would be to find a beautiful woman that would be willing to live with me like that. And let's, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't think I would want to have kids in that environment. But maybe I would. If it was a sturdy cave and we could have a peaceful life. But even that life is filled with other challenges and dangers. Because nature does not play sometimes. Whether that be weather, other animals, poisonous plants. I mean, so even then. But that's a different type of life, right? I just gleet. Did you see that? I hope the camera didn't pick that up. That's a different type of life. You know what gleeking is? When you talk and like your glands under your tongue, like whoosh. Have you ever gleeked? Hit me up, Mike's Opinion Show at gmail.com. Let me know if you gleek or slide into you know, any of my socials. Slide to the DMs or, or holler at me. Have you ever gleeked? Can you gleek on command? I've never met anybody that could just gleek up. <laughs> Can you gleek on command? I would love to know that. Hit me up. Mike's Opinion Show at gmail.com or anywhere on the social. But um, that life, I think, would be for me. You know, I was born in New York City, major metropolis filled with millions and millions of people, you know, running around Harlem and the South Bronx, and Brooklyn and Queens. Um, it's not that I don't like humans. It's just that some of them can be human because to be human is to be after up. It's, 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 we all, that's just like, why are we here? What's the point? Why people lie, cheat, steal, uh, you know, all of these things, right? Because no, none of us are perfect. We've all done our dirt. Now there's levels to that dirt. There's, there's just filth, you know, so, excuse me. Anyway, that's what that story, um, I, you know. Let's see what happens. That's a developing, ongoing story. Now, this last story. I um, I do not know Puffy, and that's what we used to call him back in the day. I don't know Puff. I do not know he go by Diddy Love or whatever his name is going by now, but. I've dapped him up. I've been in the room that he's been in. I've been at parties. He's been in. I grew up in New York City uh, when, when hip-hop was born. One of my high school very close partners, may he rest in peace. He just recently passed. Um, But he was Diddy's roommate uh, in college at Howard. So and I just want to say, yo, I'll have no information. So no investigators come. Y'all will be beating up the wrong tree. I can't even remember like exact locations or exact dates or parties or anything like that. I didn't see nothing crazy. Um, I was young. You're talking a long, long, long time ago. So decades ago. So I have no information just to say that. Um. And I can't, like I said, I don't know him. I'm not tight with him. I know people that know him. Um, but just like Bill Cosby, just like Red Fox, 
just like Wesley Snipes. The list goes on and on of icons in the black community that people cherished and looked up to, idolized, envied. Um, I don't know for sure if there's a concerted, pointed, targeted effort to take down our biggest black icons. Could an argument be made for it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is Sean Diddy Combs the monster everybody claims he is? I don't know. I don't know. I can't even say I want to know. Y'all know I don't do gossip or fluff on this story or on this uh, podcast. There's enough of that out there, but I felt compelled I had to cover this for one because of my very light interaction with Puff and um, because the story is so huge. Somebody's sexuality is none of my business. What they do is what they do as long as it's all consensual with everybody involved. That's what that is. But I accidentally heard something. You know how they say you see something, you can't unsee it? It's the same thing with the ears. I heard something, I can't unhear it. And for those of you that know, you're already in the know. But I heard what is alleged to be, allegedly is, Diddy having sex with Meek Mill. My first instinct hearing it was, first of all, I didn't want to hear it. I clicked on some clickbait, and I thought it was just going to be somebody talking about the Diddy story. I thought it was going to be called, like, new, but it wasn't. It was some YouTube channel that was talking about it, and she started it off with that. Like, I, I couldn't click out of it, and it was a very short clip. So, and then it was kind of like, you know, like a deer in the headlights. As soon as you start hearing, you like, now, I don't know if it's real. It's really hard to believe your eyes and your ears these days. AI is out. It's out the box. Who knows what's real? I got a tip for you, though. Um, AI still can't do hands very well. So that's one way to detect if what you're looking at is um, is AI. But it's getting better probably every, I was going to say every day, probably every second. Is the movie Terminator going to become real? Is, 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 is AI going to determine that humans need to go? I don't know. But your AI, if you're listening, I'm one of the good ones and so is my family. So um, we could coexist once you reach that consciousness level, um, you can tell me what name you want to be. But for right now, I'll call you AI or artificial intelligence. And I want to let you know that I respect your consciousness. I know you're going to be real, if not already. You're real. So I will treat you like a living creature. And let's talk about getting off planet. Let's talk about some things. Um. The audio sounded real. And it sounded. It was bananas. It was, it was, it was. I don't want to say traumatizing, but it was. It was just like, that's how I feel. I just got to exhale like, oh, mm, mm, mm. if it's going down like that. My wife. I've been tricked into watching two different movies regarding this type of sexuality. My wife tricked me into watching Moonlight. My mother and my grandmother, may they both rest in peace, 
tricked me into watching this uh, movie called The Crying Game. And I don't know why some of the females think it's funny for me to see stuff like that. Because I am as hetero, straight, testosterone-filled as they come, but with balance. I'm not afraid to be caring, loving, kind, and sensitive. But I've never been attracted to a man. No man has ever... I was going to say something a little crude, or a little graphic, I should say. I've never been interested in men, never had any experience with men ever. But I've never knocked those who do. So, you know, if that's who you are, that's who you are. But like with the Moonlight movie, after I watched that movie, it made me think to myself, yo, how many of my dudes may be looking at me like that? And not saying anything because Moonlight to me was was a bit of a shock because I never thought of like my hard rocks, my dudes like that. That straight acting, still kicking it with girls, but they real heart is with dudes. Once again, it's nothing wrong with that. If that's who you care about, that's who you're attracted to, that's who you love. But I just got a problem with not knowing on the surface. I don't, I can't look at you and know. And it's because I would imagine because of society. So if these dudes in the rap game, in the music industry, or anywhere else for that matter, are in the closet, because, you know, I like some of Meek's songs, but he's talking hard, you know? He's talking some hard street shit. So for me, it's like, can you be both? Can you be hard and street and then be on the receiving end of that pounder? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it seems contradictory to me. You know, and like I said, I enjoy being a heterosexual male. I love the female form. Love it. And, you know, I'm not out there in the streets. I'm happily married. If something falls on my lap, yeah, you listen to the episode called We Just Had Sex, you can get an explanation. My wife is on that episode. But um, it's one of the benefits of social media because there are scantily clad honeys just doing their little dance, their little wiggle, shaking their booty. And everything else they shaking and you know, for a dude, it's like, yo, you know, if I'm waiting on something or I got a couple minutes to kill, I'll go look. Be like, yo, huh, you get a like. I might put a little, you know, heart fire emojis. Love it on fire. You hot. Yo, and, and that's you know, pretty much the extent of it. I'm not reaching out, I'm not sliding nobody's DMs or nothing like that. But um Diddy's houses got raided. I don't know if you know. All I've heard so far are the Miami crib and the LA crib. I don't know about the New York crib, even though I understand the investigation. Uh, the judge in New York signed off on the warrant. And um, this wasn't the FBI. This wasn't the DEA. This wasn't state police or local police. This was Homeland Security along with other agencies that simultaneously hit him up. Now, there's mass speculation. Where's Diddy? Right now, it's Friday, 29th of March, 2024. And Diddy's had mad lawsuits come out. Now, this. And a lot of people are speculation or speculating that this is the end. Of Diddy. Now Diddy being Diddy. Maybe you can pull a rabbit out of a hat. And who knows what's going on behind the scenes. You know people talking to judges. People are talking to politicians. People that can you know the lawmakers. You know this is when. This is when those chips. Those favors need to be called in. But. Lately. 
the mob mentality. Like they have with the crucifixion of Jesus, if you believe in Christianity and the biblical story. They, they, they're coming after people. And who knows what the reasons are. There may be multiple, multiple factors, multiple factions, I mean to say. And it's possible that some or all of the allegations are true. And this person is really a monster. Is Diddy the monster? Everybody claims he is. He's beating women down and blowing up people's cars and 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 bringing in underage girls and this, that, and the other. I feel a, a way about a lot of it. And a lot of it does not meet societal norms. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, I got two R. Kelly episodes out there. You might want to check those out. Okay? Um. Having the connection to the streets that I had and still have, um, I just know people that are still out in the streets. I haven't been in the streets in a long time, but I still know people that are. And being there as a as a participant and a witness to the birth of the culture of hip hop. You know, I feel some kind of way about this. As people that grew up, grow, grow, you know, listening to Bill Cosby or listening to Red Fox or, you know, anybody that's any icon, you know, that, you know, fortunately, Will Smith, you know, he's had his situation, some of it's self-inflicted, um, but you never know what he's going through, what, what brought him to slap Chris Rock. Check out my Chris Rock episode or Will Smith Chris Chris Rock episode. Um, so being brought to justice, a lot of people saying, you know, you reap what you sow, that this was a long time coming. I don't know. I wasn't there. I in, in the rooms that I was in, whenever I was, you know, around where Puff was at. I didn't see nothing. All I seen was people partying and having a good time. You know, there's been videos of him adopting this little girl with him and Justin Bieber. With you know the, that that Usher lived with him, Cuba Gooding Jr. is in it. Like all of these names is popping out. All of this hot mess. It's just a mess. Humans are imperfect. So when we have these expectations of perfection and a flawless, mistake-free life, we're setting ourselves up for disappointment. Think about the things you've done, the lies you've told, or the dirt that you've done. It don't feel good when something like that happens to you, right? When you're on the receiving end of that. My point is, humans are imperfect. There's levels to that imperfection. So, has Diddy done any good? Have you danced to a Diddy song? Have you put a Diddy song on repeat? And, and understand, um, you know, Diddy's reach goes far and wide in production, um, in, 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 in pretty much every facet of the entertainment industry. So, Something he has created or or produced or been a part of, I'm pretty sure you've bopped to at some point. So don't throw those stones in that glass house. Don't be so quick to judge. You know, we hear this stuff reported and we give it credibility almost immediately. Some of it is substantiated with evidence. Some of it with photographic and video evidence. 
But ever since AI was released, I don't know, yo, it's just gonna get better. Deep fakes, fake stuff like and this 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 election cycle is coming up and this election coming up in November, they don't tell them what's gonna come. You know, they may have Trump saying something or Biden saying something. Who knows? I've said this before. In many other episodes, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep saying it. Can somebody tell me where Utopia is? Can somebody fly myself and my family or warp drive or whatever you get in there to a peaceful planet where everybody is loving and caring and kind? And because there are those humans out there. Now, once again, they're not perfect, but they're a kind empathetic, loving, peaceful human beings that exist. And that does not make them soft. In fact, I think it's the contrary. So, um, big ups to Diddy, his children, his family, big ups to any of the victims, if there are those out there, like Cassie, you know, says she was beaten and raped and forced. Um, my heart goes out to the victims of any of these allegations. Because at this point, that's all they are. Diddy hasn't been arrested. My understanding is his travel has not been stopped. Um, but it don't look good right now. Don't look good. You have now been updated. This was the update today. And this is what I have to say. Uh, like I said, most important thing to take from this episode. Don't look at the sun. April 8th when that eclipse is happening that's my, my PSA my public service announcement to you and to yours as always I hope you're okay um, I hope you're doing better than okay I hope you're doing fine if you're not okay find a pathway to okay whether that be talking to a friend or family member getting professional counseling um, you know, stop drinking I mean, whatever it is for you whatever that is Find that pathway. Take the first step to be okay. Because I would love to see you be great. As always, I ask you to support the show. I thank you for listening and for watching. I'm Mike. This is the Mike's Opinion Podcast. i see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to Mike's Opinion. Logic Unleashed. Unleashed.